Shabbat Shalom. We begin our, our service, this Shabbat service, with Lecha Dodi, the song of welcoming the, the Sabbath bride. The origins of the song are found in the, in the pastoral fields outside of, of the sacred of the holy city of Tzfat. The Kabbalists spiritually preparing to welcome the divine presence for an occasion of the Sabbath. As we greet Shabbat together, we also yearn not only to greet the Shabbat queen, the Shabbat bride, but to greet each other, to once again embrace in friendship in this, in this space. Until then, we remain together virtually, we remain together for this service. Lecha Dodi will be followed by Mim Komcha from Shabbat Shacharit. Lecha Dodi, Likrat Kala, Likrat, Likrat Kala. Pene Shabbat Nikabela, Pene Shabbat Nikabela. Shamor ve zachor bedibur echad, Ishmianu kel hameyuchad. Hashem echad ushmo echad, Veshem ul tiferet veli tihila. Lechad odi likrat kala, Likrat, likrat kala. Penei Shabbat nikabela, penei Shabbat nikabela. Lo tevoshi vero ti kalmi, mati sto chachi umatemi, bachie chesu. Ani ami venivne tahir venivne tahir al tila lechad odi likrat kala likrat likrat kala penei shabbat nikabela penei shabbat nikabela. Yamin usmol tifrotzi, vet Hashem tariti, al yadish ben parti, venis mecha venagila, lechad odi likrat kala, likrat likrat kala. Penei Shabbat nikabela, penei Shabbat nikabela. Boi b'shalom, aferet bala, gam b'simcha u'b'tzahora, toch emune. Tishkon, 
Tit gadal ve tit gadash Betoch Yerushalayim ircha The selection of our Torah reading, which we are about to hear, contains the verses of Vayehi bin Soa Ha'aron, describing the ark's travel amidst the nation of Israel throughout their journey in the wilderness. These are the verses we sing when taking the Torah out of the ark or placing it back into the ark in our synagogues every time there is a public Torah reading. These are joyous phrases which give a sense of the way that the Torah and the Word of God guide our movement throughout our lives, much like the way the Ark guided the travel of the Israelites so many generations ago. When the Ark would travel, the people would follow. When the Ark would rest, the people would stop. Al pi Hashem, all according to the Word of God, as described in our parasha. These verses are also a pivotal moment in the book of Bimidbar. Until now, this has been an exciting time as the nation readies itself for travel directly into the Promised Land. These verses describe an ideal nation that is calm and confident, trusting in God's guidance and in their ability to reach the Holy Land. After these verses, the book takes a sharp turn into rebellion and chaos, a mistrust of God, which ultimately leads to the 40 years of wandering and the wait for the next generation to enter the land. These verses then, in hindsight, are painting an idyllic picture, one that ends up being so hard for the nation to maintain. In our own times, we often experience those feelings of uncertainty which so plagued the Jewish nation in our early years, and which were understandable given the uncertainty of the journey through the wilderness. When in doubt, perhaps we can go back to Vayehi bin Soa Ha'aron to anchor ourselves in the words of God and our ancestors, to know that if we are to remain steadfast and confident in our journey through the wilderness of life, it will be because of our faith in God and our trust in the divine word of the Torah to light our way. Alehem yomam benos aham min hamachanehe vayehi bin soa haron vayomer moshe kuma adonai veyafutsu oyevecha veyanusu mesan echa mi panecha uvenucho yomar shuva adonai rivevot we now offer the prayer for the Canadian government. Heavenly Father, we invoke your blessings upon our Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth II, the Governor-General of Canada, and the constituted officers of our government. 
protège-les par ta grâce et assiste-les dans leurs décisions. Inspire-les qu'ils gouvernent la nation dans la fidélité et l'amour de la vérité. Engage-les à chercher le bien pour les habitants de notre pays. Fais-le savoir qu'une nation est grande par sa justice et sa droiture. Lord of all people, implant within our hearts a respect for the law and a resoluteness of purpose in advancing the cause of freedom, justice, and peace. Aide notre pays dans ses efforts estimables. Protège nos militaires et notre armée, qu'ils soient une force de bien parmi les nations. And let us say, Amen. We offer now the tefillah l'shalom hamedina, the prayer for the state of Israel. Avinu sheba shamayim tzur Yisrael v'goalo, barech et medinat Yisrael, rishit tzmichat geulatenu. Hagen aleha be'evrat chastecha, ufros aleha sukach lomecha, ushlach orcha v'amitcha l'rasheha sareha v'yoatseha, v'takenem be'etza tova milfanecha. Chazek et yedei migenei eretz kodshenu, v'hanchilem Eloheinu Yeshua v'ateret nitzachon t'atrem. Venatata shalom ba'aretz, v'simchat olam liyoshveha, v'nomar, amen. Avinu, avinu, sheba shamayim, sur Yisrael v'goalo. Avinu, avinu, Sheba Shamayim, Sur Israel Vegoado, Barech, Barech, Et Medinat Israel, Reshit Zemichat Kiunatenu, Hagen Bevrat has deha, Ufros alea sukacheromeha. Avinu, avinu, Sheba Shamayim, Sur Israel Begolo. Avinu. We now offer the Misheberach Lecholim, the prayer for the sick. We ask God's healing for all who are sick and for the medical staff entrusted with their care. And we pray for the mental and emotional well-being of so many who are alone right now. As I pause, please say the names of those you know who are in need of our prayers. Misheberach Avotenu Avraham Yitzchak V'Yaakov Moshe Aharon David Shlomo V'Imotenu Sarah Rivka Rachel V'Leah May God heal the following people who are sick. Ba'avur shakahal mitpalel ba'avuram, bischar zeha kadosh baruchu yimale rachami malehem, lachlimam ul rapotam ul hachzikam ul hachyotam, bishlach lahem mehera rifuash le mamin hashamayim, lechol evarehem ul lechol gidehem, betoch sha'ar chole Yisrael, rifuat ha nefesh, rifuat ha guf, shabati milizok, rifuat kravalavo, hashtabagala vizman kariv, minomar, amen. Rofeyom Shelach refua Sheremma Lechol Lecholei Amecha Betoch Kol Yoshevei Tevel Venomar Amen Rofei 
היום שלך רפואה שלמה לכל חולי עמך בתוך כל יושבי תבל ונאמר אמן אמן חזיקים בה ותומכיה מאושר דרכיה דרכיה וכל נתיבותיה שלום וכל נתיבותיה שלום There's a fascinating moment of jealousy in our Torah portion. As Rashi notes, it was Aaron, the high priest, the brother of Moses. It was Aaron who was jealous, Aharon HaKohen. There had been a, a great inauguration ceremony for the tabernacle and all of, all of the tribes had brought their gifts. Well, not all of them, all except for the tribe of, of Levi, including the Kohanim, including the priests, including Aaron and his family. They didn't bring gifts. And Rashi, as Rashi says, that when Aaron saw the, the, the inauguration and the role of, of the princes and the role that the tribes uh, played in that, in that ceremony, he felt badly about it, for neither he nor his tribe were part of that ceremony. And the Holy One, blessed be he, said to Aaron, said to the high priest, by your life, your role is greater than theirs, for you kindle and prepare the lamps. And therefore, our Torah portion begins with the kindling, with the law of the kindling of the lamps, which was meant as a type of, of reassurance to Aaron, your portion is greater than theirs, and all those who brought the gifts for the inauguration, you will kindle and prepare the lamps. Meaning, the menorah was a consolation prize. Don't worry, Aaron. It's true that they had the merit of bringing gifts, and you didn't, but you have something that they don't have. You have the menorah, and I want to take a moment to understand why this is a consolation. What was so great about this commandment of kindling the menorah? Or in what way was it greater than, than the people who brought, who brought the gifts? And I'd like to answer by sharing what I find to be a very beautiful story. Years ago, about 30 years ago, Elie Wiesel visited Saragossa. And like most tourists, he visited the sites as well as the impressive cathedral. And while walking through the church, a man approached him speaking French and offered to be his guide. 
in the course of their conversation, it came out that Eli Wiesel was Jewish and that he spoke Hebrew. And the man, the, the guide, exclaimed, he said, I've never met a Jewish person before, but I have something that I really, I have to show you. Maybe you can tell me what, what it is. And so they walked to the Spaniard's apartment. And when they arrived, the man took out an old manuscript and he, he showed it to Wiesel. He said, this is Hebrew, right? My family has passed it down for generations. We were told that were it to be destroyed, we would bring a curse on our family. And in fact, it was Hebrew and it was it was 500 years old. Wiesel began to tremble as he read the document. Slowly he translated it for his, his host. It said, I, Moses ben Avraham, forced to break all ties with my people and my faith, leave these lines to the children of my children and theirs, in order that on the day when Israel will be able to walk again, its head held high under the sun without fear or remorse, they will know where their roots lie written in Saragossa, the ninth of Av, in the year of punishment and exile, meaning the year of 1492. What's the meaning of this document? Asked, uh, asked the alarmed man who had assumed that it was some kind of amulet. The man knew nothing about the history of Spanish Jewry or about the expulsion of Jews. In fact, until that moment, he had considered being called a Jew as an insult, and Wiesel told him the story of, of our people. And the man's eyes grew wider and wider, and then they parted ways. Fast forward five years. Elie Wiesel is visiting Jerusalem. He is greeted, he's accosted by, by a man on, on the street. The man says, hello, don't you remember me? Saragossa, Saragossa, don't you remember me? Wiesel hesitated. The man was speaking Hebrew, not French. He couldn't place him. And then the man says, I have something to show you. He took Wiesel to his apartment. They walked up three flights of stairs. He opened the door. And there in a picture frame was that same yellowed parchment. But this time, Wiesel didn't need to read it. The man could now, could now read it. From Moses ben Avraham to his descendants. He had, he had learned Hebrew. He had left Spain and moved to Israel. He had reclaimed his Jewish heritage. They spoke for a while. And soon Wiesel got up to leave. As he was leaving, the man stopped him and he said, You forgot to ask me something very important. And Wiesel said, what is it? He said, you forgot to ask me my name. I have a new Hebrew name, and I want you to know it. My name is Moshe ben Avraham, Moses, the son of Abraham. He is alive after 500 years. It's a powerful story of continuity. And it's that that Nachmanides, that Ramban, the great commentator, it's that that he suggests this was the consolation to Aaron, the high priest. You, Aaron, you get to light the menorah. They gave gift to the inauguration, but you know how, how many times the inauguration takes place? Only once in all of history did they inaugurate the Mishkan. But you, Aaron, you get to kindle the, the menorah. You get to light that fire. And how often do you get to do it? Not only every day, but you get, it, get to do it for all for all generations. That's the blessing of continuity. This, ri this ritual will not stop now. It will not stop in your lifetime, in our lifetimes. This ritual will continue for as long as Jews observe rituals. And that's our prayer here as well. That's part of the reason that we gather here, that we put so much effort into staying, staying connected. We gather certainly for our own inspiration and fulfillment, but we also gather so that this tradition that means so much to us will survive far into the future. And that's the message with which we turn now to the prayer of, of the Shema, the prayer that connects the generations. The words of Shema are found many places in our, in our liturgy, including in the Kedushah of the Shabbat Musaf service. And this prayer of Shema will be followed by the singing of Adon Olam. We are grateful that you have joined us for the service and always Shabbat Shalom. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echa